<laughs> what? Hiya, Talking Reds. I'm Josh Sexton. Got Craig Hannon again with me today. The uh, the, the Friday team feels like feels like we got back together on a different day, mate. It's nice, yeah. I thought you were saying that a little bit, like you weren't happy about it there. Like well, I've got him again. I've got to deal with Hannon again. I've gone from most Stewart to Ian Ryan, so it feels like you know I've been used a bit. I feel like I'm downgrade. <laughs> oh, what? <wow. laughs> See, you've been doing the schedule next, Sean. Fuck, fuck him off. <laughs> Don't fuck me off, Sean. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll have a chat about the Reds, shall we? Please, please. I feel please. like that's the sort of purpose of, of this enterprise. Uh, well, we'll have a chat about Fulham first, actually, as Sean's put that first on his agenda. And as he's, as he's, as he's put, I just love reading off Sean's agenda, to be honest. Every time there is one, I'm just going to do that. So, uh, yeah, one of them. He says they're absolutely shite. Well, he's actually said they're absolutely. Oh, he's, crass. He, I wasn't yeah, going to say know, that. Yeah. Well, you were so, it's Josh being like the editor of the Anfield Rap was sub-editing this before and uh, he seems to but miss I wasn't, wasn't going to tell the audience that you well know. you know what you, you, you threw me under the bus <laughs> 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 they are crap Josh yeah it's at the end <laughs> <laughs> nah they're last in the league aren't they the, um, and I, I think like that, that last in the league yeah they're I'm, absolutely last yeah, in this league they, they, no but they absolutely are in terms of their performances like any time I've watched them they've just been abject they've just so I think they're the worst defensive league in the uh, uh, worst defensive team in the league um, even like players like I always think that whenever fans get excited about um, a team's transfer window in terms of another team so they look at them and they go what, what a transfer window they've had quite often it turns out that it doesn't you know, it, it doesn't work in the way that they... I'm thinking of, like, AC Milan a couple of seasons ago, sign everyone, everyone's going, wow, it's absolute FIFA football manager um, transfer window, and then they end up crap. Well, Fulham, Fulham's that team that you're looking at and thinking, well, Shirley's good business, Siri's good business, they've got Sessegnon, um, the, was it Callum Chambers, there's a, there's a few others, we were looking at it and thinking, like, Fulham are, you know, Fulham, Fulham could be a surprise prospect here, and, and they've just not delivered at all, and I think this is... If I'm Jurgen, I'm, I'm licking my lips at the prospect of this game, especially after what's gone on this week, um, because they're a team that can be got at. Like we, we saw how bad Cardiff were uh, in the first half, especially. Well, you know, Fulham, Fulham been worse than them this season, so we should really be, be, be looking forward to getting stuck into them. Yeah, there's been a lot of chat about goal difference in terms of catching up to, to what City are doing at the moment, and it, and it, it feels like you could. The sort of importance you can put on it, but I think the most important thing is is that Liverpool start performing again, and, and not even necessarily to to last season standards. I, I'm not sure there's much use in comparison. And Jurgen was talking along those same lines in his in his press conference today. There's, there's probably not not much point in comparing the sort of two seasons, but we know this Liverpool team can perform better, and it's important to start showing that, isn't it? Uh, has, there, has there ever been another year where two teams are at the top of the league, or three, if you include Chelsea, three teams are at the top of the league, and there's been so much talk around goal difference? I don't understand it. It's, it's November. It's early as well. It's yeah, November. It's really like, why is this a thing? Um, it, it feels like it's pressure that we're putting on ourselves. I think we need goals because we want to see the performances again, the performances that you know, lit up the league last season uh, and the Champions League last season. We know that they can do it. We know that it's within them. Kev Walsh used the, the perfect term. It's muscle memory. And that hope, hoping that that muscle memory will come back. So I want to see goals against Fulham, but I want to see goals for the confidence. And I want to see, I want to see Firmino get a goal. And I want to see uh, Mane and Salah and, and everyone to be talking about, oh, look, how, look how brilliant the Reds are again. Um, I'm not bothered about goal difference at this minute. I think we need to... We need to worry less about Man City and and enjoy this, enjoy what we're on, and and it's the fact that the Reds are one of the best teams in the league at the minute. They're two points off top. Um, we're out, we're within a, we're within a title race, um, and and we need to keep just picking up the points and 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 then worrying about goal difference at the end of the season, um, because if this league comes down to goal difference, um, then. We've done what well. can you do? What can you do? You've <laughs> just well, you've, you've, does, you've yeah. had a you've had a brilliant season. What can you do? I think worrying about it at this stage is 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 a bit silly. And um, you, like Jurgen Klopp mentions that in the press conference um, earlier on today. And I think he, he, context is the thing that's been mentioned quite often. Um, and that within the context of the, the way the league's gone this season, the way within the context of how good the challenges are in Man City, um, that we should be doing better. Well. You know, within the context of comparing Liverpool to where they were this time last season, and then you know the season that we enjoyed in the end last season, well, we're we're, we're in a far better position at the minute. Um, and I think this like hysteria at the moment needs to 
it just needs to calm itself. It's November, we're two points off top. Yeah, what, what I really liked from Jurgen's press conference today is he, uh, is he was quite sort of forthright in, in, in attacking those who have negative views. There's been a lot of sort of crisis talk this week, which I think, like, like you mentioned, that's absolutely ridiculous at this stage, but he says it best. He says, we have 27 points and conceded four goals. We have space for improvement, but there's no room for a negative view. And that's, and that's the thing, Craig, is that at this stage to be, to be talking negatively, albeit, yeah, we've, we've struggled in the Champions League group to some extent. It's, it's a tough group. We knew it was going to be a tough group. Maybe you can argue that we should have been, you know, picking up six points against Red Star, but for that to still be in our hands at this stage and for us to be within touching distance of City in the league when we've not been performing, and City will be looking at that as well and going, well, we're snotting teams six and five nil every week, and we still can't we still can't get these off our tail. Who, who yet to even start performing? That's it. That must that must be grinding on Guardiola. Like the fact that they are this is as good as Man City can be. You just don't get any better than the way they are at the moment, and they're still only two points ahead of us. Um, and 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 everyone's talking about Liverpool not clicking yet, and about you know this this blip that Liverpool are in, and they're two points off Man City, who are the best team that have ever walked this Premier League. Apparently, so this. It just needs that we just need to calm it down a little bit, and like it's exactly what Jurgen Klopp's saying in there because you hear. Um, I know uh, Neil Jones of Goal did uh, an interview of Allison, and Allison was basically saying, "Look, we know how we know that Man City are good enough to win this league, but we also know that we can do it as well." Um, it's interesting what you're saying about his teammates because he, he mentioned about the Man City teammates, didn't he? And he just said, like, we've all acknowledged it's going to be dead hard. So I imagine this is his mates from Brazil who, who play for City are saying the exact same thing, saying, like, well, we, we, we know we can win the league, we know we've got a good chance, but it's going to be difficult even as much for them. It, 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 it's just, there's, there's it's really so, hard to win a Premier League. Yeah, <laughs> it is, and, it, and it's even harder to, to win it two years in the bounce. We've yeah. seen that. I'm try, I'm, we united the last team to do it years and years ago. I, so. I can't, yeah, so it, it's a very difficult thing to do, and it's just about us making making sure that uh, in the run into the to the the end of the Premier League that we're we're there and we're still challenging and then we'll see how Man City deal with that because they didn't have to deal with that last year. Um, and and if I'm yeah if I'm if I'm Guardiola like he mentions Liverpool and in, in his you know the Milner thing like I don't know if anyone mentioned that in talking to yesterday but the very fact that when he's asked about the Sterling uh, the Sterling penalty he mentions the fact that Milner touched the ball or whatever for their offside goal in the Champions League it means that we're in Pep Guardiola's head and it means that every single game when he's preparing for for a team he's got Liverpool in the back of his mind and it's about us making sure we're we're amongst that because we've got under the skin of their fan base we've got under the skin of their their the team's journalists we've got under the skin of the manager and I'm sure the players don't like us too much either considering we haven't clicked yet and we're two points behind so um, just keep keep it going and, uh, and and see what happens at the end of the season don't worry about goal difference Yeah we mentioned Jurgen Klopp's press conference there and uh, we, we usually do a show called The Team Talk reacting to that after it's happened uh, me and Craig were on the one which was recorded earlier that'll be out later today but there's also The Weekender which was out this morning and here's a little clip of that for you I mean that's that's a big thing isn't it Kev it's, it's what they know the people of and I know <coughs> I listened to one of our sort of subscription shows on Tour Play this week when you you were talking about this. You're talking about the fact that it doesn't have to be oh, you know, you don't have to convince them that, that this is possible because they've done it already. And and also they can remember back to this year. I wrote something for for our website today talking about the fact that you know we remember all this amazing football last year, but actually this time last year, um, you know, we. we We'd only scored four goals three times in, in the league. It's exactly the same this time, you know. So it wasn't it wasn't always this blistering and stuff, you know. We've been to City and, and Spurs and got battered, and so you know, although there was it was it was, there was kind of more highs and lows and, and probably a few more highs. It wasn't that there wasn't that consistency. It wasn't that brilliant football for ten months. So we're actually in a better position now than we were this time last year if we can kick on like we did last time. Hundred percent, and that that is that's the big thing that I'm taking solace in the fact that we're not asking them to make a great great leap in to do something they've never done before we're saying listen go back to March this year and do exactly what you were doing then that's all we want you to do we just need you to play the games that we've seen you play we've battered some really big teams with basically the same squad we've got now and we've done it with, we've got now a bedrock to build on in a, with the goalkeeper and centre halves and the, and the full backs as well to be fair we've got some great players there who allow you if you do only get one in a game you can 9 out of 10 be confident that's enough to get you to win. Whereas last year, even in March, April, it wasn't enough to get you to win because we were going to concede. 
So all we're asking the others to do is raise the game, not to new levels, nowhere, not even anywhere near new levels. If they get to 90% of what they were doing last year, we'll be absolutely flying and most teams won't be able to live with us. So getting back to that point should be easy enough. It's just it's just about getting them to, listen, the word everyone keeps saying is probably people are fed up with it and it's click. Yeah. But if they do click, if they do, if they do click, we're going to be a scary prospect because if you're a team that you can't get the ball off, and even if you do, you've got to get through three locked doors before you can score, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You've got no chance, have you? And we'll have teams, the way City now have got teams coming and playing against them and they're beating before they get there. Over, over Christmas, I've got no doubt you'll see teams going to at the Etihad and they'll be resting players with eyes, eyes on games ahead because they think, well, we know we're going to get beat there and it doesn't make any difference to us. So they, you'll see teams doing that there. If we can just get into gear now, over Christmas, that's when teams will start doing it for Liverpool yeah. as well. They'll come to Anfield already beaten. And when that happens, that's when you can put your matchups in there, put your Lallanas in there, at, but do it at Anfield. Do it in, where they're a little bit more comfortable and do it in games where there's not a, a title to be walked to it when you know you're going to win. Yeah, for any, anyone who hasn't subscribed to our podcast yet, our tour player subscription service, I recommend that you definitely get on that. And uh, Craig, we're actually being recognised for, uh, for all our hard work at the moment, which is <laughs> nice, isn't it? <laughs> we are. Um, the FSF, have, um, they've nominated us for uh, the Fan Media of the Year. So we've won Podcast of the Year twice before, beating The Guardian, beating all of the other football podcasts. I can't <laughs> Oops, remember them. Love the boasting. Uh, and, and we've won Radio Show of the Year. We beat the BBC that year as well. So I think... Um, I think we now want to make it sort of our fourth, but sort of the, the treble um, as such. So we're, we're in for Fan Media of the Year. Um, we'd really appreciate your help. Um, to vote for us, all you have to do is go to theamfieldrap.com forward slash vote. Um, you don't have to fill out um, each category. You can just vote for the Anfield Rap. Uh, or Mo Salah, you can add him in. He's yeah. important as well. Jamie, Jamie Carragher, Carragher, Jonathan Norcroft. Yeah. But if you just want to vote for us, it's all right. Um, but I, I know uh, when we were out in America and, and we were chatting to a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of the time what they said is they loved watching us. They loved watching Talking Reds, but they didn't actually listen to the podcast. So if you don't listen to the podcast, there's two free. Uh, and the clip that you've just seen is The Weekender and it's a builder. So um, yeah, get on the podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. And there'll be a link to vote in the description as well. But uh, Craig, looking ahead to the weekend again, and uh, Klopp's been talking about the team today. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the, about the front three and it probably not clicking so far and I think each member of that has, has sort of been, been given a bit, of, a bit of blame and a bit of responsibility for that which is as, as it should be, it should obviously be blamed as a team but I think there's sort of a, a general acknowledgement now that a lot of that blame is, is sort of starting to be shifted towards Roberto for me and I've seen a little bit written this week but one of the things I, I think about that is that He's obviously our facilitator and everyone, everyone talks about that and maybe that doesn't help when, in terms of when you're trying to get things going but also opposition teams will know that and they're going to start playing, playing against him and play, sort of making a plan for him which is something you've got to think about as well, isn't it? Yeah, look, over the past sort of two years he has been, he's been that cog in the machine. He's been the one that once you put him in it makes everyone else work. It elevates Salah, it elevates uh, Mane. Um, and it, look, it's not happened for him. I've, I think we've seen a, f a couple of um, decent performances. Obviously, he changes the game when he comes on against PSG, scores the scores the winner. Um, he was great away at Spurs. Um, it's just around that we haven't seen we haven't seen enough goals from him. And I think, look, I think I think people have been slightly harsh in, on the front three as a whole in terms of what they've contributed to this season because you know Salah scores forty odd goals last season and that's okay, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. but but I think that if you look at if you look at both um, Salah and Mane, the goals that they've scored, so, uh, Mane's got six and eleven in the Premier League. Uh, sorry, six and ten in the Premier League, five and eleven for Salah in the Premier League. Now, any other season, any other team, looking at that, if that was your two strikers, you'd be going, yeah, happy days. Basically, both one and two, or one of them better than one and two. That's that's what you want from your striker, and I think that. I think that what they've what they've done in the past season, season and a half uh, for Sadio Mane is is they've 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 almost like they've put themselves up here in terms of the level, and now that's what we expect from them every week. And uh, Farino as well, like he's going through he's going through a difficult patch, but then. We've had this before with him, where he's gone through a little patch, and then they have a purple patch, and, and then he'll, he'll he'll start banging the mini again. So it's not like we've seen what we know what they've. It goes back to the muscle memory thing. That doesn't just work as a team. That works for the players. We've seen what they can do individually, and we know what they can do in terms of their contribution, their all-round contribution. Because that's the thing about these three players is that they're attackers and they score loads of goals and assists, but their work rate and and everything that they contribute to the team as well. 
beyond that makes them makes them so special. Um, and I think there's been there's a lot of pressure on them that what they've done, and I think Jurgen Klopp says this in the press conferences, what they've done so far has been enough to ensure that we're sitting second in the league, second in the Champions League group, uh, and only two points off City. So. What happens when they when they do explode and when they do return to, to playing in the same way that they, we, we know they can, and and you know other so a couple of the other problems within the team, the midfield and the amount of sort of ingenuity that's come from the midfield or the lack of and and the fact that we've kind of missed that creative link between the midfield and the attack. Well, that's gonna that's gonna affect those three up top. So. Um, you're, you've got down here in the team. I know Shakiri's right at the bottom, but that's why I'm excited to see Shakiri again. I feel like I say this every week now, um, and and the Belgrade match in the, in, in midweek kind of makes you want Shakiri more. He became a better player during that game uh, without even playing, um, because I feel like he he can be that man in, in midfield, and um, and I definitely go for him in midfield um, alongside Kate is back, Henderson's back. Do you think he'll go? Do you think he'll go both Henderson and Keita? It's interesting, isn't it? I know we were discussing on the, on the team talk. He could, he could almost go with the most sort of like attacking version of his midfield, I suppose. But Fabinho is someone who, who also needs game time. He, he played quite well against Cardiff, which, which is a sort of similar pattern in terms of the game to this. So you could maybe play him and then go with two more attacking, knowing that he's going to shore up a bit more. Maybe, maybe Henderson does that. Maybe, you know, that's, that's sort of his role now. But it would be interesting to see whether he would go with Kater and Shakiri because you'd think that is the most attacking version of the midfield that you can get. Yeah. I think that you know Shakiri plays in that three against Southampton. We're three 0 up at half time, and he obviously hooks him, but he hooks him because he wanted it to be a little bit more conservative. I think he was unhappy with the formation yeah. more than actually Shakiri. Yeah, he said he was so. he was delighted with his performance. So um, I'd like to see him in there. Obviously, I'd like to see Naby Keita because we saw we saw you know we saw early signs that he could be something special for Liverpool. And obviously, there was a little dip in the injury. Um, but yeah, this this feels like the kind of game to to throw him in again and, and after the international break have him coming back for Watford and PSG and there's Merseyside derbies and Napoli and all these big games that are coming up um, I actually look I, I think he probably does start Henderson but I would have no problem with him starting Fabinho and I know he had a difficult game against Arsenal but this is going to be a completely different kind of game and um, you know, we saw he was excellent against Belgrade and we were all kind of licking our lips at this new defensive midfielder we've got. So I think these are the kind of games that are going to get him used to the Premier League and, and I, I'd have no problem. So it's nice to have these options again. Yeah. Like we're looking at the midfield uh, during, during the week and we're looking, at, we're looking at that as one of the areas that we really needed to improve and we needed more from them. Um, and now we're able to say, well, we could we could have a, a completely new three thrown in there, and Henderson, Kate, and, and Shakiri. So, uh, yeah, I, I I would be up for that. I would say, but I'm a I'm a risk taker. I think. Yeah, I, th- I think I'll probably go for Henderson, one Alden, Shakiri as the sort of middle of the road option. Just please, God, give James Milner a rest. I'm worried <laughs> yeah. that his legs are going to fall off. To be honest. Yeah, but there's there's been Alden, who's been one of one of our standout performers this season, and I've just I've just named my team and not included him um, because of midweek and. Uh, yeah, we've look, we've got depth there, and um, the problem is the link between, and the problem is the the player that drives the midfield forward, and and probably something that Henderson might do if he does play is sort of dictate dictate the play more and the tempo more, um, which is something I didn't really see from anyone uh, in midfield during the week. So. Um, yeah, whoever he plays, we should bar them, let's be honest. Yeah, well, just in terms of the rest of the team, though, Craig, a bit further forward, Sean makes a case for maybe Sturridge keeping his place, wasn't up to much in the week. I'm sort of tempted to say that I think this is the game that Firmino should be playing in, particularly if, you, if you're talking about him being out of form, then these are the ones where, where he might be able to get himself a couple of goals, where Fulham being, being a poor defence and conceding as many goals as they have, even if they have a plan for him, it might not be a good enough one to stop him. So in terms of wanting that front three to click, I think this is the game where you really want to see that, isn't it? Yeah, I um I am, I'm, I'm a little bit tor- torn on Firmino uh, and I think it's just because he's played a lot of football mm-hmm. and, and I know he only plays sort of 40, 45 minutes because he, come, he comes on at half time the other night. He only plays 45 minutes the other night but he's going to go away with Brazil here and there's a part of me that thinks Sturridge isn't going anywhere on international duty so do you play him in this game uh, with Salah Mane or I don't know. I don't I, I I think I think you're probably right. I think I think he probably looks at it and goes, well, you know, Sturridge played in the middle of the week and he didn't score that chance, and it could have been a completely different game. Mm. So now we give Firmino a go. Um, he hooks him at half time as well, which yeah. makes it, tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, it tells that. him. Yeah, it tells you he wasn't happy with it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. I don't. 
I don't know. I think I, I don't think any would have, any of us would have seen Matip starting the other night uh, and Lalana as well. So I don't want to see Matip starting. <laughs> no, nor do I, and I, and, I, and I don't want to see Lalana starting really um, because he's all of these things that we're asking of our midfield, and he's not really those, um, and he hasn't really looked up to speed since he's come back. Um, so yeah, I think that we've. we've there's loads of options there. It's just trying to work out which is which is the right one. And you touch on Matip there. So in terms of the defence, what do you go for? I think Sean Sean questions here whether Klein comes into that. I say absolutely not. Again, no. to be honest, I think think this, this would be the perfect game for Trent. Do you move Gomez into the middle then? Maybe play him with Lover and give Virgil a bit of a rest. It's been a while since he's had one. I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering what uh, Jurgen Klopp's going to negotiate with the Dutch national team mm-hmm. as to whether he can negotiate anything with Klopp, with uh, in regards to Van Dijk. I just think Van Dijk feels as if he could just almost play every game, just the way he plays. Do you know what I mean? That like he never feels as if he's doing lots of running. He never feels as if he's fully sprinting because he's in the right position. It just feels as if he takes the game in his stride. And look, he's going to need a rest, of course he is. And you look at the, the next run of fixtures and you wonder where, if, if you're wanting to rest any of the big players, Robertson. Like I think Robertson probably gets rested, or I would rest him because if you look at the run of games, you don't want Moreno against uh, Watford away, PSG away. Um, you don't want him against even Everton at home. I don't. I'm, I'm trying to work out where he gets his game, yeah. where Robertson gets his rest, and, and I think this is probably the one. So if I'm going to have Moreno on the side, then I probably keep Van Dijk in um, and, and go Just Van Dijk. Safe. Yeah, and go Van Dijk, <laughs> Gomez, um, and Trent definitely. Yeah. Well, like you said before, whatever whatever team we do, part should be enough to uh, to batter these anyway. And let's hope that's the case. Uh, that that's been talking Reds anyway. As we mentioned, the weekend around the team talk have come out today. If you're not on to the Amphorap, get on it and also vote for us in the FSF awards. Nice one.